So what if I told you that a bit of hard pruning now in summer would actually make your apple harvest next year way bigger? Would you believe me? Trust me on this one. So grab your secateurs and let's go. So today we're going to be pruning my two columnar apple trees. That's these guys here. You'll also hear them called patio trees or pillar trees. These are basically the long skinny ones that just grow very, very narrow. Perfect if you've got a small garden like us. Now, I won't lie to you guys. I know exactly how you feel because last year was the first year I had these trees and it was the first time I ever pruned them and I was terrified. It's the fact that whatever I do or happens this year will affect it for at least an entire season. So, you know, it's that whole, all that time and care and effort to not get any apples and not even know if I'm going to get any the next year either. It just all seems a bit much. Because you worry that if you do it wrong, you're going to ruin your apple harvests. But I had a fabulous teacher last year who helped me get over that fear. And I'm going to try and do the same for you guys this year. And I'm going to really simplify how to prune your apple trees to get those massive harvests. And it goes like this. Hello. Hello. Can I help you? So um, do you fancy having a go pruning the apple trees? Me? Yeah. The, 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 but you made me prune my cosmos already this year. I can't have any more trauma. I promise. It's dead easy. Okay. Come on, I'll show you. I didn't realise how tall these are going. Not bad, are they? Okay. It's actually really, really easy and simple to do. Way easier than you think. Okay. Now. You've helped me to prune the tree out front. Yes. And we did that in winter. Yes, we did it in December when there was no leaves and then we couldn't figure out how big the branches were. Yeah, so here's the thing, right? We are pruning these in summer, which might seem a bit unusual. But the reason we prune in summer is to encourage lots of new fruit buds, okay? So we're going to really get the tree to focus in on all those fruit buds close to the stem here. Whereas in winter, when we're pruning, it's more about the creating the structure and the shape of the tree, okay? So two different times a year when you prune. So, um, when do we prune in summer, do you think? Or how do you know when to prune? Because you're telling me I have to do <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Okay, dead, dead easy, right? The easiest way then, thinking about it, is you want to kind of do this the July, August time, okay? For us, we want to get it done before the end of August. So that's your simple way to think about it. But you can actually tell if your tree's ready. So if we look at all this whippy new growth we've got from this year, do you see how you can even see from oh, there? Oh yeah, it's a different colour. It's a different colour, yeah. So the ends are really soft and bendy, but as you go down, it gets really woody and tough at the base. Yeah. So if your new growth is about the first third of it, or just slightly over that, is woody, but the top is still all that new soft stuff, that's a good sign that it's time to do this pruning. The other thing you can look at is the ends of the branches. So if you look at the ends and they finish in leaves or little bits there you can see, oh, yeah. that mm -hmm. means it's still trying to put out new foliage. But some of the branches, when you look at them, you'll see it's a bud. So it's okay. finalising in a bud at the end, that nice fat fruit bud there. So if you have a look around your tree and you see that the majority of those new branches are ending in a fruit bud, again, there you go, that's your hint that it's time to do your summer prune. So there you go. So you can either do it on set dates between July and August. You can look at how much of that new growth has actually gone hard and woody, or you can see how much of the new growth has ended with a bud at the end of the branch. And when it's the majority, that's your hint. Okay? So okay. next year you'll be able to tell when it's time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll still make you do it, but yes. Okay. Oh, I, I suspect you'll be well up for it now. Okay, so what we need then is your secateurs. Make sure they're nice and clean and sharp. Yep. So not mine. <laughs> mine are clean and sharp because <laughs> I just sharpened them. Okay. The reason for that is when we're going to be pruning any plants at all, we want to make sure that we're not leaving dirt in the wounds and we want them to be sharp so that we're just getting a nice clean cut and we're not doing a raggedy wound. Right. How do you know what to cut then? 
because I'm going to tell you. Because you're going to tell me. <laughs> it's your wee face. Okay, it's as simple as this. So let's take this branch for example. So this is a new one coming out. So we've got the main stem there. Yeah. And this growth coming out is all the new stuff that we're going to trim right back. Okay. okay. Now what you're looking for is something called a basal cluster. Right? Sounds really technical, doesn't it? All it is, is if you go back and follow the branch, you'll see there'll be a kind of tough, knobbly bit, and that'll have lots of leaves or buds really, really close together. Whereas as you go along towards the outside, those leaves and buds will get further and further apart. So we're looking for that little bit where it's obviously the new growth this year, and it's got that little bit with all the leaves and buds. On this branch, we've got the main branch coming out of the stem, mm -hmm. And you will see it carries on and it's all the new growth and it's got these other branches coming out okay okay so you can see where i cut it back to last year because you see this basal cluster here you see oh, how yeah. it's a big knobbly bit and there's lots of leaves mm -hmm. whereas when you go up here they're really far apart so that's what you're looking for ah, so okay, that's your you. bit you're going to see right i'm going to prune from there on one of these branches normal branch that's coming out you're going to take it back to about three leaves or buds above that basal cluster. Okay. okay. So you can see it's all there and it's all close. Mm -hmm. So we go one, two, and that would be three. So I would cut it to here. Okay. But here's a top tip. Before you get in there and you cut this, how you use your secateurs on the way around will make a difference. So we'll get my dirty secateurs back to show you. So on your secateurs, you'll have one side that's the blade, okay? And the other side is the dull part, it's called the anvil. And the blade goes past that dull part and that's how it cuts. What we want to do is make sure that the blade side is facing the tree stem. So that when you cut it, the bit that's left gets that nice clean cut from the blade. Whereas the other side, where it's the anvil, will get more of a crush because there's less chance of leaving damage that disease can get into. Okay. So make sure your blade side is facing the trunk of the tree. That way? Yep. That's it. Okay. okay. So if you go for and it... And now we've moved. <laughs> well, have a go then. So have a think. So you had your... So follow it right back to the stem so you know where you're coming from. So you had your... Okay. Right, so there's the branch. So you can look and see where did I prune it to last year. And it comes all the way up here. And where's your basal cluster? There's a lumpy bit there. That's it. With some leaves. So we go up mm -hmm. and up again to there. But you've got two, yeah. it then splits. So yeah, you can okay. take both of these. So we're looking for about three leaves or buds mm -hmm. above that basal cluster. So on this branch, because it splits, the last one is this one there, just underneath. So we're going to, so this is the main branch here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take it to just above that. So there. Just above that one. There. Okay, yep, that's it. Okay. There we go. I mean, that's like a lot to take off, but trust me, you'll really be thankful for this. But as we said, that one has developed other sort of arms coming out. Yeah. Here's the difference. So your main branch coming out from the stem, you're going to take that to three buds or leaves above that basal cluster. These extra branches that are coming out of that one, we're going to take them really, really close in to one. So we're going to look at where that's coming out. Mm -hmm. You'll see there it's the knobbly bit again. So we're going to take that to just the one bud or leaf. So there. That's it. Yep. Now, which way round are your secateurs? Blade on the inside. Blade towards the, the living tissue. There. Yeah, that's it. There you go. That's that one done. Oh, missed. Okay, what about this one? Okay, let's try it again. So looking at it, follow it down. So there's the, it's the same. It's the same. So this is your main branch. So this is another one that's coming out of the main branch. Uh -huh. So we take it to one. So I take it to there. There. Yep. There you go. Oh, so you've done one branch. One little branch. Think about it though. Think about how windy it is just yeah, now. So this will help. Stop it. Okay. Whipping back and forth. Gonna, this close. is a good example of we've got the main stem. So we've got the branch that's coming out of the stem. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is another branch that's coming out of that one. So this is one of the ones we're going to take to right back. one bud. So again, might have to move the apples to see. 
so you're going to want to come right in just, there, just yeah. right in under right there. Right in oh. there. That's it. Okay, so you see how this works? Yes. But I'm still going to make you point to every single branch and every single cut that I have to make because I don't want all the responsibility because it's scary. Well, you've only done a couple. I've only Trust done two. Me, by the time we've done this tree, you'll feel much more confident when we get to that one. So let's okay. look at it again. Here's another branch here pointing at me. So let's have a look and see if you can find where's the basal cluster. So is it a main branch or is it coming out of a main branch? Ooh, it's a bit fiddly to see actually because you've got... You've got a branch coming this way, mm -hmm. and it's coming, yeah, so it's coming off this branch, and then there's another knobbly bit that's kind of crossing itself. Ah, okay. So this is another fantastic thing then. General practice when you're pruning, whether it's summer or winter, you want to look at something called the three Ds, and that is anything that's diseased, take it off. Anything that's dead, take it off. Anything that's damaged, take it off okay and when you get this sort of thing where branches are crossing they are going to become damaged and then that can let disease in so we're going to take that off that's standard so we don't want anything crossing or rubbing so treat it like i mentioned before take them down to one bud yeah so it's going to be let's see where the is it? for the last is it there or is it one below that there. leaf there. that one there Okay, and the same with this one. Because it's coming out of the main branch, we, we do it to one bud. So, there. Yeah. There you go. Still seems scary. A little bit, but I'll get there. I, was, I wasn't confident with the cosmos and that worked, so... Okay, so pick the next one you want to look at. I suppose if we, we should really work our way up. Mm-hmm. So we're probably here. We've just got apples coming out of it. And that's the main branch. So the branch is coming all the way up here and then it's do the knobbly bit there. Uh-huh. So one oh, twinged when you did that. Sorry. You're probably coming up to a bit. So it's got a wee split on it that's not really doing anything. Would you? So, if we're saying this is the, our main the base, bit here, yeah, the, base, yeah. the base is there. So we've got one, two, three. So cut there. Yeah. So you want to try and always be as close to that little bud bit as you possibly can. That's it. Excellent. So here's the thing. We're doing this and we're saying right three buds for the main branch and one bud for any of the branches that come out of that but you know it's not the end of the world if you take it to two buds or you leave four or five on this is just a guide basically what we're doing is we're wanting to shorten that branch down so it's much closer to the stem so you don't have the risk of apples forming at the end and then with the weight of the apples it will snap and you'll lose them but also Bringing it in short like that is telling the tree to really focus on getting those fruit buds formed because you're putting it under stress. You're making it think it's in danger. And that's the idea. We want lots of fruit buds close to the stem. That's why we're doing it. Okay. Okay, so what's next? So carrying on, because we've done this bit, so mm -hmm. we're probably up here-ish. Okay. That's a nice, easy one to see, actually. I wish we'd done that first. <laughs> But you had to do all the other ones so we could so find we could get that to, one. Yeah, because we couldn't get close enough. Can you identify where the basal cluster is? Uh, it's in here. Just above where these apples are currently growing. Okay. Because that's the main stem, the main upper. Yes. There's a leaf here uh -huh. too. There's one there. There you go. Three, so it's going there. So it's there. Okay, so remember blade, other way, blade facing the tree. That's it. There you go. So we're looking to find one of the main branches coming out the stem. This one. And then you want to find that basal cluster. There. And then three buds up or three leaves up. 
Who are we going as far as they are? Do we think? Mm-hmm. There we go. So already I can hear you're a wee bit more confident. I'm getting mugged by a dahlia. But you've got this branch here coming up the way and it's coming sort of off it. It's a bit messy, so it's this branch here. Yes, yeah, so I'd say this looks like it's the main branch because it's the one coming straight from the stem mm -hmm. and this is the sub. So this one would be one bud. There? Uh, maybe that one, I'd say. There? Yeah. There you go, perfect. And remember, and always keep your secateurs the blade to the tree. Yeah. Okay, so follow that back for me. Does it go all the way back to the main stem? Yes. Yes. There. So it's a main branch. So where's the, the lumpy bit with the cluster of buds or leaves? There. Okay, excellent. And then I just think. count up. So that's the clump there. So let me see, so. Yep, so there's your basal cluster. So we can go one, two. It's a double, but that would be three to me, so I'd cut it there. Here. That's it. Now remember, that's oh. it. Blade in. Hurrah! So, um, you have just pruned two apple trees. Indeed, I have. Much, much tidier much you look you can get past yeah which has been the main issue apart from the dahlias which will still mug us but you know they're gorgeous that so has we'll been the main them. issue with the trees is we couldn't get past because they had these long whippy branches and with the wind just now it was catching them and all off yeah they were yeah so there you go you did that so next year when we get heaps of apples you can be really smug okay good job So it is scary, it is stressful the first time you do it, but once you get that in your head that all you're doing is just finding out main stem, go and find that basal cluster, so where can you see, as Kate put it, the knobbly bit that's got all the buds and leaves really close together, and then just count up from there three leaves or three buds, and that's where you go. And it seems really short, but if you're worried, just remember, you don't want a big cluster of apples at the end of a whippy branch, because chances are they won't make it. So that's why we take it in short on these columnar trees. Hope that was useful, folks. And we'll see you next time. See ya. You did it. You did an awesome job, haven't you? That's spot on. That was scary. <laughs> <laughs>